Hey, everybody, this is Jonah Lupton, your host of Startup Sense, uh, bringing you another great episode today. Uh, Our guest is Seymour Dunker. He is the co-founder of iCharts. Seymour, how are you? Good. Thanks, Jonah. Nice uh, having you. Thank you. Uh, So where are you in the company based? Uh, We are based here in Mountain View in California. How long have you guys been there for? So I moved here to the U.S. in uh, roughly 2010. So uh, we've been in Sunnyvale first and then moved into Mountain View recently. So a couple of years. Okay, cool. Um, So before we talk about your company, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. I... um, as I said, I moved here from Germany originally, background, computer sciences and business, um, have been involved in startups back in Germany, founded, co-founded uh, one of the original CRM companies back in Germany, then moved on to work um, at SAP uh, for a couple of years. And after that, uh, basically had the idea for iCharts. And uh, um, launched the idea back while I was still in Germany, but uh, decided to incorporate the company in the U.S. and uh, make myself uh, make my way here to the U.S. So what happened with your um, your last CRM company? You sell it, shut it down, still in in business. Yeah, no. So that was uh, essentially sold to a mid-market ERP um, company some time back. Okay, cool. Uh, So now talk to us about iCharts. What exactly does the company do? Sure, absolutely. So iCharts is a cloud-based platform. We provide, it's a complete high-performance business intelligence solution that we provide to business users and enterprises. We work closely with uh, big ecosystems like NetSuite and Google and leverage their underlying platform to provide best best-in-class business intelligence to, uh, to, to join customers. So we serve all of the NetSuite customers, um, around about 30,000 uh, NetSuite customers, and we are uh, working very closely with Google to bring a great solution to market that provides high-performance business intelligence solutions for large, large-scale data sets uh, that business users can easily um, uh, utilized to create uh, dashboards, reports, pivot tables, visualizations for their day-to-day work. So the problem is that as a business owner, as a CEO, as a manager of division, there's dozens and dozens of reports that you have to look at every day. And what you guys are essentially doing is sucking it all into one dashboard? Correct. Correct. Exactly. So uh, typically, if I'm running a business or running a department, or even I'm an analyst, then I need data and I need insights and I need key KPIs to basically measure my uh, performance and progress. So so we provide an end-to-end solution to, uh, uh, you know, calculate and generate those KPIs and then provide them in a highly visual format. And uh, we allow you to do that on, on literally extremely large data sets. So no, no restrictions, whether you have, you know, you know, fairly small data sets or terabytes of data. We give you, uh, we give our business users the tools to generate those um, reports on the fly. So, who is your typical customer? I mean, it's probably not the the four person business at the end of the street. I mean, you guys are working with larger, much larger enterprises, right? Yeah, and I'll I'll answer that in the context of the ecosystems we work with. So, so for example, uh, for Netsuite, it's basically literally every Netsuite customer, be it a ten, uh, you know, we have we have small customers, ten man companies, uh, to very large organizations. So we are relevant basically for all of them. Could be small to to large. And then um, with the with the joint Google solution, uh, CloudScale, we are um, we are able to we basically typically generate or, uh, company sizes fifty million dollars and above, um, who have basically larger operations um, and uh, multiple data sources that they want to uh, run, you know, integrate and run KPIs uh, uh, atop. So what what could some of those data sources be? That would flow into the dashboard. Well, it could be anything from, uh, um, for example, order transactions data, or you know, credit card transactions could be, uh, 
um, you know, marketing automation data, could be, you know, website data, log data, pretty much anything that um, that you can think of and that you can that you need to run certain user KPIs could be supply chain data, could be financial data. Okay. So do all those different services, you know, most of them are probably software based. Uh, are there APIs that flow into iCharts? Correct. So, so basically we, um, most of those systems uh, are, um, you know, already in the cloud or people are transitioning them to the cloud. So we hook into them with APIs and uh and then basically use those apis to uh, um run our visualizations and dashboards on top of those cool yeah i mean i've checked out the website beautiful website i mean you can just tell just from a couple of those images on the home page you know what some of these reports and dashboards look like and it's just you know some people love the numbers and they love digging into the data most people don't and they want to just get like a quick snapshot of what everything looks like and that's clearly what you guys are providing Exactly. And if you think, for example, like uh, let's talk a little bit about the NetSuite ecosystem. So inside of Net- NetSuite, one uh, of our you know great core capabilities is that we essentially live inside of NetSuite. So typically, you know, what uh, uh, users do, they have their systems, they extract the data and then have to run, you know, the dashboards outside of uh, NetSuite. So what we provide is a, a, the ability to run as an app completely inside of NetSuite. So you never leave NetSuite. You have a single sign-on to NetSuite. You are basically almost from a business user perspective, it's almost impossible to, uh, uh, to see where NetSuite uh, stops and where iCharge starts. We are that natively embedded. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so it's really seamless for the user. Uh, now, take us back to the beginning. When you started iCharts, I mean, obviously, you're a serial entrepreneur. Uh, you came over to the U.S. from Germany, right? Correct. Yes. Um, landed in Silicon Valley or in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, what did it, what did it take to get this company off the ground? I know you started it in like 2008. Uh, right. did you guys, how long did you bootstrap it? Then when did you raise money and, and who did you go to for investors? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I've, uh, it was kind of like a very interesting, intense journey. So, you know, when we started originally back in Germany, I, I sort of had the like this original. I was like at SAP, and I felt that uh, I wanted to create this uh, paradigm of you know that was um, the shift into cloud-based services was starting to accelerate. And I've been always my background always has been in data and business intelligence. So I wanted to create in a platform that allows you to visualize data in the in the cloud. And um, so you know, as we went along, um, we I had you know early customer validation with a number of publishers who gave me strong thumbs up, and sort of like the original business model was um, to focus more on public data sets. And um, I was then spoke to various people. I could have you know created the company back in Germany, um, uh, also in the U.S. I after having several conversations with people. Um, and also from my own experience, it's easier to basically work in the U.S. markets if you're based in the U.S. And outside of the U.S., people, you know, think uh, technology is a, uh, that comes from the U.S. is great. So I felt that it would be the right move to to set this up in in in, uh, in Silicon Valley. And then we we essentially um, applied for the TechCrunch, the original TechCrunch conference, and we got selected. And you know, we. Got uh, we essentially launched the uh, uh, the company on the TechCrunch stage, which was a great kind of platform um, for us to kind of like you know test initial validation and the market, and um, so that's basically where I decided okay this is uh, what I want to go full fully fledged in. Only challenge was that it was right when the financial crisis hit, so I had launched the company in the U.S. I had incorporated the company in the U.S. I was still back in Germany. But I was uh, determined to uh, to I was I believe so fundamentally into in in this in, in, in the whole proposition that um, you know we we pivoted immediately into more of a B two B play focusing on on you know market research companies and essentially building out the technology which was still like extremely nascent and um, I I then uh, found an initial badge when we essentially bootstrapped our way until roughly 2012 based on family and friends funding and initial set of large individual private investors 
who then enabled me to basically move that uh, move myself and my family to uh, to the U.S. and really get started uh, sometime in 2010 when I hit ground here in the U.S. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I mean, this is uh, when it when you bootstrap when, in the beginning when you launched and you decided to bootstrap them. You know, in the beginning, um, did you build a lot of the software yourself, or were you hiring uh, developers or contractors, or you know, was this your co-founders helping? How did you guys actually build this technology? Yeah, exactly. So I had a co-founder who um, with me back in Germany, who unfortunately could not make the step to the U.S. for you know for certain personal reasons. Um, uh, but I, so we kind of like created the initial, the initial, initial version, and quickly needed to scale from a, from a development capability. I mean, the thing about business intelligence is not lean technology, pretty deep technology, pretty comprehensive technology. So, I uh, found an early team. Uh, I'm half Indian, so I had you know strong connections to India. So I found like an early development team to help and support us build out the initial team back in India. So it kind of was like interesting at my, some of my development capacity early on uh, in India, I was based in Germany, was trying to get to the U S and um, so, so that, that helped us create kind of like the initial version of, um, of, of, of the product that, you know, we built out over the years in close collaboration with many, many, you know, cost, early customers we signed up and helping us to navigate the right level of functionality that really mattered for the market. Now, I mean, obviously, NetSuite is a great partner for you at this point. Uh, at how early in the company, um, you know, were you able to go to them and say, hey, this is what I'm working on. You know, will you let me, um, you know, use the information that your customers are generating through Netscape to plug into, you know, my business intelligence software? Like, how did how did the, how did you partner up with them? You know, were- yes, absolutely. So. So obviously, to be able to partner that, you need a certain level of maturity in the product, and we had reached that after you know iterating ourselves uh, um, through the market, and and at some point it kind of like you know it was became it became um, clear that these uh, you know uh, ecosystem platforms like NetSuite and and also Salesforce and others had have essentially limiting you know limited very limited reporting capabilities that basically and everybody was reinventing the wheel in terms of you know uh, uh, the business intelligence visual analytics component and I felt that our technology which was from day one built for you know, uh, for a web-based application that you could easily embed into other websites. I mean, that was kind of like the core of one of our core foundational ideas. I felt that like that was a perfect fit that we could, uh, you know, do, you know, uh, pitch a value proposition is that we could be the embedded solution inside of NetSuite. And uh, when I came to the U.S., I, it took some time, you know, I I had to build everything from scratch, including my network. But I, I was able to, and I was lucky to develop some strong um, uh, connection with a number of key advisors who ultimately helped me then get introduced to uh, uh, senior management at uh, NetSuite. I basically got a um, 20 minutes call with Zach Nelson, CEO of NetSuite, and who gave me a thumbs up and said, that's exactly what uh, we need for... Uh, our customers, and um, we quickly signed a partnership uh, agreement, and that helped us um, uh, get on the way and uh, launch our our proposition. And I decided, like you know, it was kind of like a very clear, immediate connect. So I decided to focus on the Netsuite ecosystem as our initial primary go-to-market uh, partner, and that worked out. Nice. I mean, why do you think NetSuite hadn't created, you know, a similar software? Yeah, so it's, I don't, this is nothing specific to NetSuite. I, you know, we see it across the entire market. I mean, yeah, right. you look at the at the big, the, even sales, Salesforce may be a little bit more advanced, but uh, ultimately all of the SaaS platforms essentially are based and built on tra- their transactional systems. They allow you to do all sorts of transactions, either financial transactions or customer interactions or some transactions of some form. Um, running analytics on top of it is essentially an orthogonal, like very different, different radical paradigm. You have to, 
you know, the, the, the technology works very differently to quickly be able to aggregate large numbers of data points into something that is a consolidated view. So, all, and then it's also a maturity thing. All these platforms uh, have built great, great businesses around the transactional paradigm. And uh, everybody basically has basic reporting capabilities at best. And, you know, if, if that's true for, for, you know, specifically the bigger platforms like NetSuite and Salesforce, it's basically literally everybody. Everybody either has hardwired few visualizations built into their product, but it's the flexibility that that's really hard to achieve. And uh, that's exactly our play. We are a best in class you know, business intelligence uh, platform and uh, component that you can plug into these platforms to power, um, you know, BI natively inside of these platforms. How big is this market? I mean, business intelligence is not a word that, you know, necessarily a lot of people recognize, but it's certainly growing because there's so much software out there that people need an easier way to integrate it all together and, you know, see it on beautiful dashboards. Any idea how big this market is? Oh, absolutely. And it's probably it's going to be a surprise how massive this market is. And you cannot, so if you if you uh, think business intelligence, it's uh, you need to think business intelligence in terms of big data, right? So there's a lot of lot of um, new technology emerging and you, you cannot separate the two. So you need to really think of big data business intelligence as one massive market and it's essentially a $50 billion market. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's enormous. I mean, there's yeah. certainly some other companies out there that are, you know, in that BI market as well. So I'm sure you have some competitors. So oh, absolutely. I mean, like, I mean, people do know, like, you know, some of them, I would assume, like, I mean, the old players in the market, it's it's not a new market. That, that market right. has existed for many, many years. There's Tableau, there's MicroStrategy, there's Cognos. Uh, there was once upon a time Hyperion and other companies who essentially, you know, got consolidated into the market. Um, and the, those are the previous generation companies uh, in that market space. It's, so how, it's actually a highly dynamic market right now. Lots of new stuff happening. So how does iCharts stand out and differentiate themselves in a market that big? Right. So so our core strategy, and I think it's working extremely well, is um, uh, rather than trying to be everything for everyone, right, and trying to uh, play the complete enterprise game where we run after every big company, we are vertically focused around ecosystems. So we want to be the absolute best solution and pretty much the only true choice for each ecosystem we play in, right? So, so NetSuite, uh, I, I, know, I, I do think that we are have already progressed very far that we can start claiming that inside of NetSuite. Uh, inside of the Google ecosystem around their big data technology, we are quickly... Um, you know, achieving that position. So, so, and we don't, we don't like, you know, I like there's, there's a lot of other technology out there and a lot of other platforms uh, out there that you could dabble with, but we want to be the best in each ecosystem we decide to take on and grow inside and with those ecosystems. Now is, is the sales and marketing efforts of your company focused mostly on those ecosystems or are you guys trying to go out and acquire enterprise customers one by one, or is it just a combination of both? Ultimately, it's a combination of both. Um, so we've built a fantastic sales and marketing machine around the NetSuite ecosystem. You know, we're generating, you know, uh, have high velocity inside of that ecosystem. We're doing the same. We're starting to do the same now with uh, with Google, um, which is which is a little bit more horizontal, but you know, still focused on on leveraging the Google Cloud platform. Uh, in conjunction with our uh, with our um, business intelligence platform, so um, our efforts combined with the ecosystem's effort, going after each ecosystem. Cool. Um, let's talk about fundraising a little bit. I don't want to you know crunch the numbers too hard, but you know you guys have raised a significant amount of money. Uh, what what's the number ballpark? We've raised twenty three million dollars to date. Okay, so- and a- across how many investors? You know, less than ten, more than ten. Oh, more than 10. So, I mean, in the early stages of the company, which was kind of like a function of um, how we got into the market, uh, you know, we started at the time where institutional, there was pretty much no institutional funding available to us. So we um, were able and lucky to find a whole number of private, small and large investors to 
you know, fund uh, the initial, uh, uh, you know, the initial up to the first round, the Series A round in 2012, right? And um, after which institutional investors started kicking in. So we do have like a larger number of investors, um, but it's a great relationship. So and like, you know, um, and been very working very closely with all of those investors. What so is, great support. Advice? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, what, what advice would you have for someone else that's going to you know, trying to, their, their hope is to raise money for their company in the next six to 12 months. What can you tell them? Right. Obviously it's a um, very different environment than I had to feel, but you know, it's always, uh, I think, you know, it's always uh, challenging. So I think you know, the fundamental, uh, and, and it also depends what, what are you doing, right? Are you more on the consumer side? Are you more on the, on the, on the business side, side of things? But my recommendation is, Raise a small, like you have a great idea, raise a, you know, a reasonable small amount, like 500,000, build a initial version, like an MVP of your product, generate traction, right? And that traction, how you define that traction depends, in my mind, on uh, where you are. If, it's, if you're more on the B2B scale, generate some initial customers that, you know, pay money or at least sign up or at least you know, um, give you some solid evidence that they're willing to pay for the product. And if it's more on the consumers, then basically it's users, right? Or whatever other metric is out there. But you want to be able to show initial metric. And then I think the next jump is really um, getting a sizable investment. And that, again, is, is depending on what exactly you do. But let's say it's between anywhere between two and four million dollars that allows you to generate a significant first milestone that you know resembles something of a real company. You've got a real team, uh, you've got you know real traction in the market, uh, and you know the beginnings of a sales and marketing uh, machinery that you know basically can fuel um, a fuel thing. You, I would say, in that second phase, you you need you you need to reach product market fit, meaning that you have, you know, strong validation and you're not struggling from every customer to customer. And then, you know, beyond then, uh, beyond that, I think you should be ready for, for, for the larger months. But I think it's those kind of like, you know, one, two, three steps that you want to hit. Like on our case, we didn't have that second step and we had to kind of like bootstrap ourselves a long time. Um, and, and so you don't, you know, you want to start with a little amount and then get a sizable chunk that gets you through uh, what I call the sinkhole. Like, you know, when you when you start, um, you have a great idea, but then you enter the phase of the sinkhole, uh, which basically means that you have a half a product, half customer validation, you know, things are not working as fast as they always hoped in right in the beginning. And you need to get through that sinkhole to the other end where you exit the sink, where you're on the way of exiting the sinkhole. Because now things are starting to click, and when you exit the sinkhole, that's when you want to get your your solid round of like larger funding. Because now you're basically starting to uh, grow rapidly and starting to scale. Awesome, uh, great advice. Thank you. Uh, how many employees is I Charge now? Um, I think uh, we are right now seventy people. We have you know rapidly growing, so we run about uh, um, uh, seventy people. And you guys still hiring? Yeah, absolutely. Always hiring. <laughs> Always hiring. Um, so you're probably in, you know, the most competitive hiring market in the entire world. Yep. Uh, how, how do you guys continue to find good talent and add quality people to the team? You know, that was one of my interesting kind of like, uh, um, uh, interesting observations here that, you know, in spite of being in this hyper competitive uh, uh, environment, we um, have seem to have a great aptitude for finding fantastic people. And what I'm finding is that like while we absolutely compete uh, with the big guys, uh, Google and others, is that those people who are hungry and passionate, they want you know a great story, great team. Uh, they want to be part of something that you can build and create. And I think that's potentially very specific to this environment, right? So it's not the lure of the big company and the big paycheck. Uh, it's it's the lure of having, being part of something exciting. I think that's, um, 
uh, that's that's one big part of the story. And then, you know, obviously you have great people and great people pull more great people in. So, you know, hiring, getting the right initial team on board that is able to, uh, you know, pull in more people, I think is essential. And then the second thing is we've opened up locations, uh, one of them in, you know, Roseville, Sacramento area, which, you know, allows us to be smart about, you know, for from a sales and marketing perspective is uh, to leverage in a low cost structure. So you don't have to have everything in this area. Right, and you right. learn early on in your organization to work in a distributed environment. Yeah, that's smart. What do you think the average length of employment for an iCharts person is? Is it six months, a year? Any idea yet? Well, uh, uh, good question. Uh, I would say it's above two years. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good number. That's yeah. very low turnover. Um, what is the single best piece of advice you've gotten from one of your investors so far? You know, um, it's, it's basically a combination of three things you need to have. Like one is the, the, the persistency. You need to be persistent and you need to have the grit, right? Um, you know, you need to, uh, you need to be willing to fight, you know, all and any obstacle that comes down your way and not get kind of like bogged down. And you need to be, uh, you know, willing to be in it for the long haul. Um, have a, and then have on the one side, a very clear, absolutely clear, crystal clear focus on what are the milestones that you need to achieve that gets you to the next level, but never forget to dream and think big, right? So it's a combination of, of essentially wanting to change the world, truly, fundamentally, but on the other side, being pragmatic about it. And there are multiple ways to that. And, you know, one way might not work out. So be ready to change course, pivot, uh, but never leave, lose your, your goal out of your sights. Awesome. Now, the, I'm sure the, the current iCharts platform, software, service, whatever you want to call it, is way more advanced than it was you know, back in 2011 when you guys launched. But what, what was the MVP kind of then compared to how many features you have now? Like, was it 20% of what you guys offer now, 30%? You know, just trying to get an understanding of, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs aren't sure what they have to launch with. Like, you know, yeah. they, they know what they want the product to look like in five years, but to try to build that in the beginning is crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. The good news is I had no idea at the time when I launched, uh, you know, how deep and how long the journey will be to, uh, to get that. So it's sometimes, sometimes um, ignorance is bliss uh, and it helps you to get started without worrying too much about it. But, you know, I would say um, uh, we had like 5% when we launched, like, wow. absolutely. <laughs> and and it's, it's kind of like, and look, we started, like we figured that like our, platform was essentially built for a public consumption paradigm which essentially you know was leaning on the data side but we had the core you know ability to embed ourselves and as we kind of like progressed and were able to broaden the technology and it's very very deep technology we are you know we graduated to basically uh you know become the best in class performance uh high performance platform that serves, you know, that is enterprise scale great now. And um, so, yeah, it's been kind of like, um, did, did we have a clear perspective on that? That was where it had to head. No, I think the market led us that way. Um, but ultimately that's, that's um, uh, the, the, the core thing that holds true from the right beginning is that there's a paradigm shift that was happening towards the cloud and into an ability that you can embed yourselves into easily into uh, into into other platforms, right? So that that's kind of like you know that was the big uh, story that we saw right there, and that that is our big differentiator today. And now we've coupled it with all the other great functionality to be enterprise grade. Right, right. Yeah, there was definitely a convergence of right four or five years ago. Everything was going cloud and. You know, everybody wanted business intelligence because there was just so much software they were using every day. They needed a way to make all that software, you know, smarter and work together. Um, what uh, What does your typical day look like? Oh, <laughs> a little busy. So, uh, so I've got three kids, three great kids. Uh, so in the morning, we uh, make sure they get off to school. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, 
um, pretty intense, uh, round the clock, um, get, uh, get to office. Uh, often I have uh, already started taking calls from home uh, before I even hit the office, um, interact with my, my core management team, um, basically like, uh, you know, drive all the interactions, uh, uh, jump on customer calls, jump on partner calls, uh, in between hours, kind of like, you know, think of how we evolved, what we do we need to involve, what are, what are the uh, things we are missing um, and uh, throughout the day, um, back home with, uh, you know, spend time with my kids, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, really important, spend time with my wife. And and then basically, you know, often I hit back the desk, um, work through more emails, do some reading, um, and yeah. Do you typically work weekends, or you really try to work Monday through Friday so the weekends can be with the family and keep your head clear or stuff like that? You know, that's an interesting one. I think we're starting to live in an environment where, you know, let's define what is work, right? I mean, it's kind of like being an entrepreneur, you're really like seven by 24. Yeah. So I, yes, I try to do like the desk work type of stuff. Um, I try to do during the week so I can basically maximize uh, my time for the family during the weekend. But I often talk to my team members over the weekend. We... You know, we we talk late at night uh, during the week. Uh, we often like you know, it's communication is obviously lighter uh, during the weekend, but we oftenly interact like small interactions. Uh, you know, via message, via whatever form, and you know, we we here at iChurch kind of like fundamentally believe on kind of like a, of a deep. Um, highly interacted, highly networked team that is kind of like constantly, um, you know, interacting and exchanging information. You know, I, I have this 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 great analogy is kind of like uh, the ants, where uh, uh, you know you have like if it's really fascinating to see you know like an ant hive and how an ant hive behaves like a really smart organization as an overall and. You know, if you kind of like, you know, figure out what is it actually that makes an ant hive uh, perform so powerfully, it's basically the rate of interaction between those ants and how often they interact. And it's not like, it's not massive amounts of information they're exchanging. It's, it's, it's literally, it's kind of like that they are constantly interacting like a brain, right? So it's kind of like the neurons in the brain are constantly interacting with each other. So, um, so that's kind of like, I think how not necessarily by design, but how we as a team are naturally evolving. Um, and so it's truly seven by 24 and there are times where uh, family is, is in focus and there are times that the business is in focus and that's fairly fluid. I was going to ask kind of, you know, what's your least favorite thing about being a startup CEO and founder? Is it just the, the fact that it really is 24 seven? The, um, let me, let me point on that question. Like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm truly passionate about this. So uh, it's kind of like, um, it doesn't always feel like work. Yeah, no, it's kind of like, uh, I, uh, sometimes I wished I had more time for reading, for example. I think, you know, I, 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 I feel that I have like enough, um, you know, that I always would love to have, you know, more time with the family, but do I feel that I'm massively compromising? Absolutely not. I, that's I've done what I want to do. But uh, yeah, I think the one thing I'd love to have a little bit more downtime in terms of being able to uh, kind of like reflect and read up um, stuff. But that's pretty much yeah. That's um, I would say the the only drawback of a of an intensive environment. Right, I feel you. What is uh, what does company culture mean to you? Uh, uh, one of the most important thing I fundamentally believe you do not can you cannot believe a uh, you cannot build a successful uh, company if it does not have a solid foundational great great culture where the individuals are kind of like at the center of of uh, of you know of uh, of everything and and ultimately it's 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 about you know balancing a high performance culture where everybody wants to be at the best, but also creating kind of like a safe environment where people can experiment and fail 
uh, and be wrong about stuff without, you know, worried about getting, getting kind of like, you know, uh, getting on the negative side of things. Right. So I think that balance, uh, and then kind of like translating into, into a team that wants to be competitive, but wants to be highly collaborative at the same time and also, you know, support the diversity across the team. Like everybody's different. Everybody has strength. And let's find and figure out the, 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 the strengths of each person and leverage it to the max. Who, uh, who does the hiring at the company? Is it one of the founders or do you guys have a, you know, HR person handle it? Well, it's uh, it's it's probably true to ourselves. It's kind of like highly collaborative. Probably sometimes to the frustration of people we interview in. <laughs> so yeah, we have a uh, you know we have uh, a uh, you know we have a process how we bring in. We have a HR person, great HR person on our team that kind of like you know helps in the pre-selection, and then we have the area person who basically is the lead on the hire. But then then like some some way mid, midway through the process. Uh, we uh, we we throw a lot of people at that person, so we get a real good cross sense of the person. But also, the person should kind of like experience early on how you know how we work. So uh, if uh, if you're suddenly getting to know everybody in the company, and not everybody, I'm just kind of like you know joking here, but uh, you know you're having a lot of uh, people wanting to interview. That's actually a good time. If I uh, surveyed all the employees at iCharts and asked them what's your favorite thing about working for the company, what do you think they would say? You know, I, I'd, I'd love to do that and I'd love to find out uh, um, uh, what they would say. So uh, I think, uh, I think you know, I, my guess is great people. Do you guys have any crazy perks like, you know, free sushi on Fridays or free dry cleaning or any of that stuff? We don't print money yet. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so we leave that to the Googles of this world. Uh, for me, it's more important uh, that, you know, people are in for, for the passion of building something great. And uh, yeah. What is, uh, I mean, you guys are a software company, so this might be a crazy question, but there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are always looking for different types of software to make them more efficient when running their business. Do you have a, a favorite piece of software that you guys use every day at iCharts? <sighs> Well, I mean, it's almost uh, our ecosystems right. that uh, that we use. I mean, it's it's literally NetSuite, it's Salesforce, it's uh, Google. Uh, the, uh, you know, we are great, great. Uh, we love all the Google technologies. I mean, the, the modern company you built on a whole platform of uh, of uh, you know different SaaS services. So so it's a uh, it's a whole combination of things. Right, and everything and everything plugs in nicely to you yeah. know what you guys have created. Um, yeah, well, I mean, just a couple more things. Um, just trying to think where where I want to go from here. Uh, any any advice that you would share for someone, you know, an entrepreneur looking to start a company in the next twelve months? I mean, you've done this a few times. You know how hard it is. You know how much time and effort it takes. Um, you know what's what's the one major lesson that you've learned along the way that you could share? Yeah, I think uh, you want to be a fundamental optimist, but uh, and that kind of like gives you and drives you. To, and you need to really deeply, deeply believe and feel about that the thing that you are about to launch matters and will make an impact. And then work hard day and night to uh, figure out what the value of what you are doing is and how is it, how is it, um, you know, how is it going to affect and impact other people? Like, you know, I mean, there's this extremely simple rule is if whatever you provide, uh, provides, you know, uh, double the value, the fraction of the cost, whatever is out there, I think you've got a great business. And even if you're not there right now when you start, work hard to get to that point, right? And um, be pragmatic about it. Love it. Love it. Uh, what's your favorite book or blog? Strategy from Ben Thompson, my favorite blog. Cool. And um, my... Uh, um, favorite book right now is in a, inevitable. Okay, and uh, favorite TV show? If you get, a, I mean, something tells me you don't get a chance to watch much TV, though. Well, actually, um, uh, I do uh, at times. How able to? My wife and I think of uh, look watching right now, Madam President, kind of yeah, like uh, yeah, fits like into it. the times, right? Yeah, oh yeah, no <laughs> so, kidding. Uh, so that that's a great show. I love that uh, that show. My parents actually got me into it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, sorry, it's uh, Madam Secretary, not Madam President. Madam Secretary. Yeah, Madam Secretary, right. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost Madam President. Yeah. 
exactly. it's been an interesting day for sure. Yeah, following following all the social media stuff the last twenty four hours has been pretty crazy. Awesome. Um, any any parting words you'd like to share with us? Uh, I know the comp- um, so if anyone interested in learning more about iCharts can go to iCharts.net. I'll post all these links, you know, on the website and in the podcast when it goes live. But any anything you'd like to share with the audience before we go? Sure, absolutely. Look, we are we are always interested in getting great feedback specific to what we do. And obviously, if there are specific use cases we can help with, please absolutely reach out to us. But also general feedback. Like, you know, we love to get uh, overall feedback, um, you know, get great ideas, feedback, thoughts, like to engage with people. So reach out to us um, and interact with us. Perfect. And in terms of hiring, any positions that you wanted to rattle off that you guys are looking for right now to fill? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm uh, continuing to look for great, um, uh, um, great uh, account executives and uh, continue to hiring SDRs. It's kind of like our main focus. We're looking for, you know, product managers, um, uh, great developers. I think on our website, iCharts.net, we've got like job listings. Okay. Or oh, um, great, great site, a great place to look up. Okay, um, yeah, I can I can post a link to the uh, the yeah. job page. Um, do you any of your employees virtual, or all these people need to be based in Mountain View or Sacramento? So um, our priority at this point is to be in one of those two locations. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely easier to build a co- company culture that way when everyone's under the same roof. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. I uh, really appreciate your time today. Uh, excited to hear what you guys are building over at iCharts, and you're welcome back anytime on the show to give us some updates. Fantastic, Jonathan. Thanks talking for the time, and uh, great talking to you. Got it, man. Best wishes. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah, same here. Thanks. Bye.